Many gamers prefer to use 10 keyless keyboards because lopping off the numpad gives you a few more inches of desk real estate for your mouse hand, along with improved ergonomics. The only problem is that, well, sometimes you really do miss those buttons. Fortunately, the good people at Chaspo have come up with a sensible solution. Why not take all those keys over there and move them over there? How did nobody think of this before? So here it is. The Chaspo C1000, a beautiful 114 key keyboard with an innovative design that I love and hate. Let's talk about why after this message from our sponsor, Madrinas. Madrinas Coffee blends specialty cold brew coffees into 15 ounce grab and go cans for your convenience. Check them out and use offer code Linus to save 40% today. Chaspo, a company apparently named by someone who's really into 19th century French rifles, says the C1000's design was guided by three principles. Respecting users' input habits, reducing finger travel and twisting, and increasing efficiency with shortcut keys. At least that's what I think this sentence is trying to say. But there are some problems here, like that the first two principles happen to be in direct conflict with one another. For example, one of the most dramatic breaks from convention on this layout, aside from having the numpad, function keys, and most of the navigation keys up top here, is the decision to move the arrow keys to the left side of the board. Now they claim that they did this for gamers, but in reality, I think they just had nowhere else to put them. Not only do these buttons offer no clear advantage over WASD, which happen to also be surrounded by useful keys for your pinky and your thumb to strike, but their placement here really screws up regular old typing. That's the exact thing they said they weren't going to do. Because the up key is between the Z and shift keys, which are normally neighbors, it is super easy to accidentally move your cursor mid-sentence, especially if you're coming from an ortholinear layout like the Ergodox, which you can check out over here. And if you're really unlucky, you'll also hit shift at the same time as up, highlighting and then overwriting everything you just typed. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Now that there's three arrow keys on the bottom row, some other buttons had to move, like the Windows key. Get the fuck out of here! You're, you're, you're going to the left of the tab now! Now, that one actually doesn't bother me too much because at least it's still accessible with the pinky key, which I already used to strike it. But it is going to mess with any muscle memory that you've built up for Windows hotkeys, as will the slightly increased distance between left control and the alphabet keys, like sacré bleu chaspeau. Pourquoi m'envoies-tu ça si tu sais que la souris ne fonctionne pas? There's also some changes for the right hand. They've actually shortened the space bar and added a second backspace key next to it for some reason. And then they went and put delete over here too, instead of function, which is supersized and way the crap, ah yes, up here. Because of that, they had to move the tilde key, putting it where the question mark should be, and again, moving shift further away. Honestly, Shaspo, I'm starting to feel like this was designed by someone who's only ever read about keyboards in a book. Now in fairness, at least you can remap almost all of the keys in the fairly robust Shaspo Power Console software. The, uh, almost. So these extra switches look like remappable macro buttons that just happen to be set by default to Show Desktop, File Explorer, and Task Manager. Unfortunately, they, along with the lock screen button and this nifty double zero key, are the only buttons that you may not remap. Basically, the exact buttons that you'd be most likely to want to remap are the ones that you cannot remap. Now, to be clear, over time, I could probably get used to all these little quirks and changes, but they raise an important question. Why should I bother? Okay, so here's why. The C1000 is a pretty sweet keyboard. The UV coated keycaps are made of ABS plastic with a laser etched legend that looks techy without being over the top. The round corners, thin bezels, and the integrated carry handle give it a sleek, geek chic look. And the steel top plate precludes any kind of deck flex and gives the C1000 a comfortable weight of 1022 grams. Also comfortable, by the way, this hoodie. 
head to lttstore.com and get it on your skin ASAP. Now the board is available in two versions. The C1000 Go has a white LED backlight and blue Otemu switches, while the Pro is full RGB with your choice of blue, red, or brown switches. The instruction manual mentions that Cherry MX switches are available, but apparently that's only if you email support, wait 20 business days, and pay an extra $50. And that's a pretty challenging thing because for 50 bucks, this G-Skill KM360 10 keyless with Cherry MX switches is available. We actually have one in the mail right now, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that review. Another advantage of the C1000 though, is that it can be paired wirelessly over Bluetooth to up to three devices, thanks to its 1860 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, which Chaspeau claims will last for 90 hours with the backlight off or 15 hours with RGB blasting full pony power. The keyboard charges in three and a half hours via USB type C, but if you're not into that, you can also just operate it in wired mode to take advantage of its USB pass-through. So should you buy this keyboard then? Honestly, I'm pretty disappointed by Shaspo's decision to place some buttons in a way that prevents this product from being completely plug and play with a minimal learning curve. They said that was one of their goals, but to me what it looks like is they prioritized having a sleek looking symmetrical keyboard layout. So they like put all the keys on in a cool, attractive way and then decided which keys did what. I mean, why else would they do something like separating the home and end keys and making one of them twice as big? Next, there's the price. $200 actually isn't that steep for a wireless, mechanical, full RGB keyboard especially from a young company that's producing small runs. But it does sting a little that we're not getting cherry switches at that price. I think even a drop of just $20 would make it a little less top heavy. And then at that point, if you can get past its shortcomings, it is a well-made keyboard in a form factor that makes sense on the desk, and it will definitely turn heads at your next LAN party. Hashtag shameless plug for LTX 2020. Speaking of shameless, you could call the Seasonic Prime Ultra Titanium the creme de la creme of power supplies. It's got ultra high efficiency with an 80 plus titanium rating, it's fully modular, and it includes a PSU tester in the box, which is really useful if you're trying to custom liquid cool. The Prime Ultra Titanium also has fluid dynamic fan bearings, hybrid fan control to control the overall fan noise, and a 50,000 hour life expectancy with a 12 year warranty. So buy it today at the links in the video description. So thanks for watching guys, see ya.